Welcome back. Let's talk about the scale of the solar system now. So I wanted to use something familiar so that you can remember um, the scale of the solar system. I hope you remember. So I drew a person here about my height. You know, it's not a great drawing, but uh, and let's imagine that Pluto is at the top of my head. Let's, let's pretend Pluto is still a planet and leave it there for now. So let's imagine Pluto is on top of my head, right? And the sun is at the end of my toes here, at the very bottom of my feet, okay? Um, where would the planets be in, in, our, in our body? So let's, for example, right, check right in the middle between Pluto and the sun. Around here, what planet would be there? Planet here would be Uranus. And you can probably make some analogy here, but I'm going to let that up to you. Okay. Now, between Uranus and Pluto, you forget the, the middle of the way again. What's between Uranus and Pluto? Well, there isn't much, right? So it has to be Neptune. So not too hard here. So Neptune would be here at about the head of your shoulders, okay? Uranus. And now let's go to the lower body. And you see that we're still missing a lot of the objects in the solar system. So let's see here. You see Uranus in the sun, the bottom of my, my foot, we would have Saturn. Can you imagine Saturn? Saturn. Can you imagine Saturn right there in your knee? Huh? That's where it would be. Now, between Saturn and the Sun, if we were to divide it again, what would we have there? Jupiter. So, Jupiter goes here. So notice, we've taken almost our entire body and we still have only the gases, the outer solar planets, and we're talking almost all, all, all of our body. Now, if we were to divide it again, and now the camera, I'm gonna have to zoom in here. If we're gonna divide again in the middle, right there, somewhere in the middle, we're gonna have something that few people are gonna guess, because it's not really a planet, but it happens to be in the middle again, so we'll use that. That's the asteroid belt. Right? It could be a planet there, but it isn't. So right here, we're going to have the asteroid belt. And I'm not going to write this big name. I'm just going to put A, B, astro asteroid belt. Guess what? Between asteroid belt and the sun, you still need to feed all of the inner planets. Right? So you still need to feed Mars, Earth, Venus, and Mercury right in there. So if you could divide approximately equally spaced this region again between the bottom of your foot and this, you would still need to feed. Uh, how many lines do we have here? This would be Mars, Earth, Venus, and you still need to put one there for Mercury. So all the inner planets are very close together, close to the sun. Now it looks like this would be very cramped. However, let's now talk about the size of these objects, because we, because we are just talking about the distance between objects here, okay? So Saturn is not this size. This is way uh, zoomed in into Saturn. Saturn is much smaller than this in this scale. So let's talk about the, the size scale of each object. Well, in this scale, the only object that you would be able to see with your naked eye would be the sun. All the other planets, you would need a microscope to be able to observe. Even Jupiter, the most massive one, you wouldn't be able to observe. So the sun would be the, great, the biggest particle in here. And how big would the sun be? So if you look at your hand, look at your nail. 
And no, it's not as big as your nail, the thickness of your nail. But the thickness of your nail, that's half a millimeter. The thickness of your nail is half a millimeter. Okay. That would be the diameter of the sun. So we want the sun would be pretty hard to see. You better have good vision. So the inner planets are, are very, very close to each other in this scale, but they're still very far away. You wouldn't be able to see any of them. Now, we have a sun that has a diameter of what, half a millimeter. How far away would the next star be? You see that there is a lot of empty space in the solar system. And that's where space, the, idea, the name space comes from. How about the next star? We talk about traveling to other stars. Where would the next star be? So the next star, or the next object, about half a millimeter, about the thickness of your nail, would be way further. Okay? So now I can't draw on my board anymore because I'm going to run, run out of space. So instead, I'm going to use a toilet paper. Okay? So you know, it's actually, it's obviously going to be larger than the size of the solar system. Right? And it's actually, and it's going to be, how far away is it going to be? So we're traveling, searching for another star that in this scale is, has a diameter of half a millimeter, the thickness of your nail. And we keep traveling, oops. And we keep traveling, traveling. All right, guys, I'm not gonna bore you to death here. We will travel, okay, the entire roll of toilet paper, and that will not be enough. We'll travel the entire roll of to to toilet paper, and then some more. We would actually have to travel 300 rolls of toilet paper, or the equivalent of 12 kilometers in this scale, to find another star this tiny in this scale. Okay. So space is really, really very empty. And all I could buy was the 150, but I guess you can double that, right? So 300 rolls of toilet paper in order to get to the, to the nearest star. And one last thing that I think is very astonishing about the scale of the solar system and the scale of, our, the, scale of things in our neighborhood is the mass scale. So we just saw that we would only be able to observe, to see the sun with our naked eye in this model that I had. But also, the mass of the solar system, almost the entire mass of the solar system is contained in the sun. So, got here these beams to represent the mass of the sun. If this was the mass of the sun, then one bean here would be the mass of Jupiter, okay? And this tiny little thing there in between, what's that? I know you want to say it's the Earth, but you know what? This is still 60 times larger than the size of the Earth, than the mass of the Earth. And I don't know if that makes you feel really important or really small, but that's just the way it is. So that's why it's a very good approximation to think that the solar system, or the mass of the solar system, is really contained in the sun. It's pretty amazing.